Over the weekend during the BET Awards, actor Jesse Williams used his ability to win an award as a way to speak out against some of the inequalities that the black community is facing. Now, during his speech, he mentioned some of the more noteworthy cases of police brutality against innocent, unarmed black individuals, specifically Tamir Rice. Well, Tommy Lauren, who works for The Blaze, uh, was very upset at this speech because if you ever have the audacity to talk about inequalities that the black community is facing, well, then you should absolutely be criticized for it. Now, we're going to show you um, a part of her video response to Jesse Williams. It starts out with part of Jesse Williams' speech, in case you missed it, and then just take a listen to her ridiculous, ignorant, and unbearable commentary on it. It would have been young Tamir Rice's 14th birthday. So I don't want to hear any more about how far we've come when paid public servants can pull a drive-by on a 12-year-old playing alone in a park in broad daylight, killing him on television and then going home to make a sandwich. Killing someone in broad daylight and then going home to make a sandwich? Are you kidding me, Jesse? Know what else is interesting, bud? Though the term unarmed black man may be literally accurate, it doesn't tell the whole story in most cases. In a number of cases, if the victim ended up being unarmed, it was certainly not for lack of trying. Grabbing an officer's gun or using other equipment to beat the police doesn't give you a free pass. Oh, but heaven forbid someone be critical of this movement. If you have a critique for the resistance, for our resistance, then you better have an established record of critique of our oppression. If you have no interest, if you have no interest in equal rights for black people, then do not make suggestions to those who do. Sit down. Equal rights. Please tell me, Mr. Williams, what rights black people don't have. Also, white people, yet yeah, we do have a record of critique of your oppression. In fact, do you know how many of our ancestors fought in the Civil War to free your ancestors? Bloodiest war in the United States history was over what was right, and it was largely white people fighting it. In fact, it was white Southern Democrats who fought for, not against, slavery. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. It's the white people that are helping all the black people. Without the white people, the black people would be totally fucked. Now, <laughs> it, here is a slightly, something slightly inconvenient. It, it was white people imprisoning and enslaving black people in the first place. Uh, they also died for the privilege of keeping black people as slaves. They thought it was so important that they be able to keep black people as property that they were willing to die for what they considered to be that right. Now here's another inconvenient fact for Tommy. Um, she says well, it was mainly white people that fought in the Civil War to free the slaves. Yeah, that's because most of the pe black people were enslaved. It's, believe me, if you had given them weapons and said, hey, would you like to join the Northern Army? They probably would have, but they couldn't because they were in chains. And yes, some of those people who enslaved them were also your ancestors. But that's not what Jesse Williams is talking about. He, you think that he's trying to insult you and, and your, your beloved ancestors, whoever they happen to be. Mm -hmm. He's not talking about that. He's not talking about slavery from hundreds of years ago, etc. He's saying today, Tamir Rice got shot within two seconds, and he was a 12-year-old boy. Then you go make a reference to Michael Brown about people reaching yes. for the gun, which by the way was never proven that Michael Brown reached for the gun, but I don't want to get back matter. into it. Facts don't matter. Yeah, Thanks, and so. I don't want to relitigate that case, but it was inconvenient for you, the Tamir Rice case, because he was unarmed, they never gave him a chance, they killed him in two seconds flat, so that's why you switched it to a different fact pattern on a different case. Yeah, she thinks she's real smart. And by the way, let me be clear about one thing before we continue on with actual statistics and facts to counter her lack of statistics and facts in that video. Um, I don't know if she believes what she says. I think that she's a cute girl who's angling for a very specific market and she's speaking to a very specific audience and she has done very well for herself as a result of doing that. Someone who's actually interested in the facts, who wants to be a journalist, goes out there, researches, and sees whether there really is some inequalities between the different communities. But here's the thing, it doesn't serve her purpose. There's no incentive for her to do that because if she actually did report the truth to the audience of The Blaze, however small all that audience may be, it, it wouldn't benefit her in any way, right? She's angling for a position at Fox News, and it'll be very lucrative for her. She'll fit right in. And again, I don't know if she believes what she says. All I know is her commentary was stupid, okay? It was stupid because there were no facts behind it. And to talk about Tamir Rice as if she, he's some sort of crazy criminal, he was a 12-year-old boy playing with a toy gun 
in a park in an open carry state, okay? And a cop showed up and shot him within two seconds. And that is not hyperbole, that's fact. That was shown in the video. You have the audacity to get mad at Jesse Williams for bringing up that case? Does that 12 year old's life not matter to you? Aven apparently not. Now let me give you the statistics on racism. Before you get to all the definitive facts on the issue, I just want to say two things. One, I'm amused that you brought up the word journalist in the same sentence as the blaze. I know, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> and, and secondly, it, the part that bothered me the most about that clip was uh, Tommy saying oftentimes uh, they're reaching for the gun, they're trying to get guns, like they had it coming. Tamir Rice was a 12 year old, if your 12 year old white kid had been murdered by a black guy within two seconds, my guess is you wouldn't be like, well, what did the 12 year old white kid do? Maybe he had it coming. That is probably not going to be your reaction. So let's keep it real on that front. But if you want to keep it real, let's give you the actual statistics and facts. All right, so look, this argument that like, oh man, the black people have all the rights that white people do and they need to stop whining and crying and, okay, there is absolute evidence and data indicating that there's institutional racism and that there's racial bias that plays a huge role in our justice system. We talk about it in great detail on this show on a regular basis. But let me give you some statistics right now, okay? So if you want to start at a very young level, uh, black children make up 18% of the preschool population, but represent almost half of all out of school suspensions. So let's get them started early, right? And this whole notion of black people being more violent or more criminal than white people is also ridiculous, okay? Black children are 18 times more likely to be sentenced as adults than white children and make up nearly 60% of children in prisons, and that's according to the APA. Let's give you some more statistics. Before we do, like the marijuana statistic that's uh, that we've talked about in the past, the, I don't want you to get the wrong impression. It's their, they do the same acts at the same rate as white people. Yes. They simply get imprisoned, whether it's suspension or imprisonment. But t to me, the most telling one is they get treated as adults at such an enormously high rate for the same crimes. Yes. So if a white kid does it, oh come on, it's just a kid. He looks like my kid. That's come on. I, that's why we have the juvenile system and not the adult system. A black kid does it, oh, that's a dangerous kid. Hey, he's going to do that the rest of his life. That's an adult. Treat him as an adult. So now you never see that because you, you're not black. So in your experience, since you didn't experience that prejudice, they oh, there goes the young Turks talking about racial bias again. We prove it to you, but you still want to close your eyes to it. Yeah, so let me give you some more, okay? Um, by the way, that stat. Black children are 18 times more likely to be tried as adults for than the white children. Same crimes. For the same crimes. But no, no, no. They have all the same rights. And, you know, Jesse Williams bringing up these issues is completely ridiculous and we need to ignore it, okay? By the way, what are you so fucking angry about? Like, why are you so angry that someone is bringing up the injustices that they're experiencing in society? What does that take away from you? Why does that make you so uncomfortable? I'm a white woman. I'm not uncomfortable with it. I know that there's inequality. I want to fix it. That doesn't make my life worse. It's not going to make my life worse off. We live in America where we're supposed to believe that everyone is created equal, right? So if there are cases of inequality, why are you so uncomfortable with someone bringing it up? That's so... The country's majority white, so hence a lot of the people who work at the Young Turks are normally, naturally white. And not one person here has ever taken racial bias personally. It's just like so if weird. we bring up a fact, John Iderola, Anna, whoever else, Michael Schur doesn't go, oh my God, why are you bringing that up? That's not fair. Are you trying to say something about me? Because they aren't racist. So, and they, and by the way, they're also understand, hey, look, there is a historical context to what happens, mm -hmm. and maybe we can help fix it. But the people who react most ironically, metaphorically violently to it, like, how dare you? Uh, do you have a dog in that fight? Why do you care so, like, why does it bother you so much when people talk about generic racial bias that all of society has? Yep. It seems like you're taking it a little personally. Exactly. So let's talk about college graduates. Now, these are people who got a higher education and they graduated, right? In the workplace, black college graduates are twice as likely as whites to struggle to find jobs. The jobless rate for blacks has been double that of whites for decades. A study even found that people with black sounding names had to send out 50% more job applications than people with white sounding names just to get a call back. We talked about that study, right? That's a very famous study. So if you 
uh, have you know stereotypical black names versus stereotypically white names, same exact resume, you have a 50 percent lower chance of even having an opportunity to get an interview if you have the black sounding name. Why are you bringing this up though, Jank? <laughs> Why are you bringing this up? Okay, don't you know about the Civil War where white people fought to, you know, end slavery? So now that's matter. not a law that you have to make sure that you don't give black people jobs. That's why we talk about the implicit bias that, that a lot of society has, even if they don't know that they have it. We're not trying to blame them, we're trying to fix the situation. That's right. If a black person kills a white person, they are twice as likely to receive the death sentence as a white person who kills a black person. Okay, so uh, local prosecutors are much more likely to upgrade a case to felony murder if you're black than if you are white. Okay, so so is it their contention that uh, black people should be executed at a greater rate for the same crimes? Is that can they really make that argument with a straight face? Like yes, no, no, of course that's how it should be. Don't fix that system. If if it's a murder either way, make sure blacks get executed at a greater rate. Who? Is anyone loathsome enough to make that case? Are they willing to be honest about their own positions and come out and say, yes, we should imprison black kids more, we should execute black adults more for the same crimes as white people do? Interesting. Go ahead and make the case. Those are all statistics uh, that look at the bigger picture, right? But then there are cases of, you know, anecdotal evidence that also drive you crazy, where you have a white Stanford University student getting caught raping an unconscious woman in the back of a dumpster and he gets six months in jail for it, right? And then you have someone like Brian Banks who was accused of rape when he was 16 years old. Later on, uh, the woman came forward and said, I made the whole thing up, right? But here's what happened, what, here's what prosecutors did and here's what his defense attorneys did. They're like, oh shit, you're facing 41 years in prison and you have an all white jury, so you need to take a plea deal. He's like, I didn't do it, I'm not taking a plea deal. They pressured him to the point where he finally just decided to take a plea deal. He served five years in prison for a crime he did not commit. Five years in prison for a crime that he didn't commit. And by the way, he spent a year in a juvenile detention center before his case even came up. Okay, what happened to a speedy trial? Well, he's a black kid, who gives a fuck about him? So those are the cases that black individuals are talking about, right? And if you did a little bit of research and you focus a little bit, bit on the facts instead of your talking points that appeal to the bigots that watch your show, maybe you'd know that. But again, there's no incentive for you to do that, you'd be out of a job. So, uh, by the way, for the Stanford case, they say, yeah, but he was a young kid with a promising future. He was 22, Banks was actually a young kid at the age of 16, also had a promising future, was a good student uh, and uh, was on his way to getting a scholarship. N but he was black, how promising could his future really be? Let's try him as an adult and give him a lot more time. So uh, so it goes on and on and then lastly, the, the one stat we also give, and by the way, this is endless, we can give you the eBay, if you said black hand, people uh, won't buy the product, Stop they'll pay, frisk, that's they'll, another example. they'll pay less for it in New York City, over 90 percent of the time, it's minorities that are stopped and frisked and then when they are get arrested at a higher rate, you go, well, they had it coming. No, but you only stop black people and, and, and Latinos. You never stopped the white people. You never got a chance to find out if they had drugs on them. And then finally, the marijuana one. Blacks and whites do marijuana at the same rate. Blacks are arrested at four times the rate. So it doesn't have to be codified in law. It is oftentimes the racism that is practiced. And that is, by the way, empirical, proved out by the data. And that is the bias that this society has that we try to point out. And because we're decent human beings, we try to fight against and fix. Whereas you think that is fantastic and should be defended. That's part of what makes you not a terrific human being.